Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be telling you guys my experience picking up my packet and crossing back over into the United States. So I have, as I mentioned in my previous video, directly after my interview in Ciudad Juarez, we drove down four hours to Cerro de la Cruz, Chihuahua, where my family's from, where I'm from, where I was born. And that is where I was set to pick up my packet slash visa passport you can choose where to pick it up you can tell them at your initial interview or you can do this prior to even going into your interview if you have a lawyer your lawyer will set it up for you if you do not i believe you can do it all online so my stuff was set to be picked up in uh i think it was periferico de la juventud in chihuahua so which well i think it was only like 10 minutes away from my grandparents house so it worked perfectly so from the day that i had my interview to the day that i was told that i can go pick up my packet it was a total of five days and the only reason why it took five days was because my interview was on a friday and they don't uh count the weekends so technically it was only like two and a half three days three business days that um from the time that i had my interview to the day that I was able to pick up my stuff. I was told on a Wednesday, I received the email that my stuff was ready to be picked up, but I didn't end up going until the next day because it was already late in the day whenever I found out. So on Thursday, I believe it was Thursday the 9th, uh, we went directly straight there in the morning, but then we were told that they do not allow pickups until after two o'clock in the afternoon. So we did have to wait. We ended up just shopping around and we came back at two o'clock and you do have to bring identification. So remember to bring identification for this to pick up your packet and your passport slash visa. The facility reminded me exactly, exactly as a facility where you go and take, uh, where you do your fingerprints and see that what is. It's the exact same setup. It's the exact same thing. You go in, no cell phones, no nothing. You have to show your identification. You go in, you go under a medical, metal detector, metal detector once. And from there you're directed to sit down and wait your turn uh wait for a window to open and then you, you'll be told to go to the to the window so i sat down i maybe waited 10 to 15 minutes there there was kind of it wasn't a lot of people maybe like 30 people there so i did have to wait a little bit and then it was finally my turn and uh all he did was ask me for identification and then he told me to just hold on for a second he walked away and he came back carrying a packet and my passport in my passport let me show you guys so that you are aware of what it looks like in my passport itself which is my mexico passport that i got at the mexican consulate here in the united states um here's my passport this is where they put my visa and this is what you're going to show at the border when you cross back over and then they hand you this huge packet uh, it's like a manila manila folder type packet and it says do not open you do not want to open it what you want to do is uh hold on to it until you reach the border so from there i literally just took my stuff he told me congratulations and i walked out so Within 10 to 15 minutes, I was out of there and I was set to go. I could have crossed back over into the United States as soon as I got it, but we didn't. We ended up staying with family until Saturday, so two more days. Uh, we just wanted to enjoy our time, enjoy family, uh, just uh, because I, I knew that we wouldn't be able to come back for a while. We got up that Saturday, uh, May 11th, which was one day before my birthday, one day before Mother's Day. My, my, my birthday was on Mother's Day this year. Uh, it was kind of interesting, but um, it only happens like every seven years or something like that. So, um, so again, we woke up that Saturday, May 11th, and we headed straight to the border. It was a four-hour drive. Uh, it took a little bit longer because we had a rental car, so we had to go to the airport and turn in that car and get our car back and just transfer everything from one car to another. So it took a little bit longer. Uh, we ended up reaching the border around 5.30, and there was a long line. So be prepared. 
uh, there is probably always a long line. We did go in through the same uh, port of entry that we did as whenever we came into Mexico. So I believe it was uh, the Cordova Bridge of the Americas uh, that was going through El Paso. Uh, you do not have to go through there. You can you can come back in through any port of entry, uh, but we had to go through there because our car was in Ciudad Juarez because we had a rental car. So that is the only reason why we went back through there. If not, then we would have gone uh, through Ojinaga, but we couldn't. So again, you can go back into the United States through any port of entry that you would like. So at the border, again, we waited for so long. I took a little nap and it wasn't until around nine o'clock. So it took that long from 5.30 to nine o'clock to finally reach where the uh, the customs agent is, where he's asking you for your documentation to cross back over into the United States. Uh, there was a stop sign first. There's three stops. There's a stop sign that tells you, okay, no more recording after this point, And then uh, once that car moves up, you move up and then it, it's like, I think it's gonna take a picture of your car or something. And then from there, once the car that's in front of you moves moves ahead, then you move ahead and that is where the custom agent is, where he's gonna ask you for your passports to cross back over into the United States. So we reached that point and my husband hands him over our passports. As soon as he took a look at my passport, my husband handed him the manila packet that I was told to give to them. And he immediately told my husband to stop the car. So I, of course, immediately started to panic. <laughs> Deep inside, I didn't want them to know that I was kind of panicking, but um, I was panicking inside. Um, then he kind of like, he, he took a look at me and he was like, get out the car, ma'am. So again, panic attack. And he was, he started to walk around and I was like, should I bring my packet with me? And he was like, yes, you'll need it. So that's when I thought, oh, well, they're just wanting to check everything to make sure that it's okay. So he took me inside. Uh, my husband had to stay out with the girls in the car. The car was still stopped. He took me inside and he told them that I had a visa package. So they guided me to go sit down in some black chairs um, in, another, in another area. And it was only me and like another person there. So it didn't take long. I sat there. I didn't know anything of my husband or anything because they didn't allow phones in there. So I just didn't bring my phone in because I didn't want to risk it. So I didn't have my phone. Um, so I didn't know what happened to them. I didn't know that they, they crossed over or they were going to wait for me. And then the, the, another custom agent came up to the window and he called me over. I handed him my stuff and he told me, are you ready to hear some, uh, not so good news? And I got another panic attack. Uh, he told me that the system was down and it may not be back up until four in the morning. So I, I was, just, I took a deep breath and I told him, well, whatever we need to do, I don't mind waiting. It, this just needs to happen. And and he was like, you can just go have a seat. And I told him, well, my family was out there. I don't know what happened. I don't have my phone on me. Um, do you know if I can get in touch with them somehow? And he was like, you know what? I'm gonna allow you to walk back out there and go get them. So he literally let me cross over into the United States walking to go get my family. As soon as they saw me, they started walking over to the building and we walked back together. And I, as we were walking back, I was telling my husband, okay, this is what is going on. Um, system is down. And so we sat down and the girls were enjoying themselves. Uh, we did have to kind of cover up their eyes a little bit because uh, behind the windows, it was, it was all open so you can see everything. Um, they had a line of people being arrested and the girls were watching that first it was a line of men they all had their hands behind their back uh, they were handcuffed and they were walking just in front of us and then there was a line of women just walking so um that was interesting to watch and i think about 15 minutes later he called me back over and he was like hey the system's back up he was such a nice nice person uh so he told me you know you can go back and sit down and I'll just put everything in the system and then we heard him stamping papers so I immediately got so excited I was like yes it's finally happening thank you God um 
I was just so happy at that point once I heard those stamps. Um, and then he called me over and he handed me my passport. He kept he kept my uh, packet. I didn't get that back, but he handed me my passport and he said, congratulations, you're set to cross back into the United States. And um, so what we did is we went to go stand in line to for the uh, uh, the custom agent to scan our passports to be let back into the United States and that was it guys so I crossed over into the United States and I was set to go we literally spent four to five hours at the border but it was all worth it at the end I was able to cross back into the United States obviously as you can tell we are back we are here we are safe um, God took care of us God took care of the whole situation as soon as I got back home which was Monday two days later because from El Paso we went straight to my parents house in Dallas uh, as soon as I got home that Monday I went online and I submitted the money which is two hundred and twenty dollars to uh, submit the application for your actual green card. I sent that in and it told me that right now it's taking up to six months to actually receive your green card. So that is all I'm waiting for. Uh, right now, all I have to hold me over in the United States is my visa, which I'm completely okay with. I'm here legally, um, whether it's just a permit for right now, but soon I will have my green card and I will make another video updating you guys when I do receive it. So, again, I put in the order May the 13th, so um, I guess we'll see how long it will take to get here. Um, again, if you guys have any questions regarding the whole entire process, anything from beginning to end, please leave them down in the comment section. I would love to help you. Uh, I'm no lawyer, I'm no nothing, but um, since I've been through this, I know that my lawyer was only there to some extent. Uh, she didn't know, um, you know, much of what was going to happen and I experienced this myself so I want to be able to help one of you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for being here um, as a part of my journey and uh, if you have given me advice, if you have asked any questions, um, just anything, I just want to thank, thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for those who have prayed for us. I know I received a lot of messages, people saying that they were praying for my journey and um, this is almost coming to an end until I apply for citizenship. So um, I will be making updates here and there um, and more videos to come. So I just really hope that you guys will stay here and that you will keep enjoying my videos. If you haven't already, I hope that you will subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload. And I will be seeing you guys in my next video. Again, thank you guys so much.